So on this stocking, we've used the same color blue behind and the yellow, so I've only used two colors, but now I'm going to go into a third color, which is the, um, the snow cloud. So I'm looking at the cloud here, and that's going to use cool outline or cool stem stitch, which is the, exactly the same stitch that we used, excuse me, can you move along to the top, Richard? At the top of the stocking along here. You've got to be telepathic if you're going to be my cameraman with my, any modicum of success. Okay, so on this uh, top line here, I made quite a big stitch because it's along a straight line. But when you go around these corners, they're going to be slightly smaller. So if you work the background before the foreground, we've worked the background here in the Laden Count work. And now we're going to do the background of this cloud because this piece here is actually behind the lower end here. So I'll just cast on. And because I'm right-handed, I'm uh, starting on the left corner here. But we're going to work a very rough stem stitch, or even you could do a split stitch, it wouldn't matter. But if the first line is a cruel outline or cruel stem stitch, then you'll find that that actually gives your a cloud a lovely shape. So I'm moving the loop away from the curve like we always do and I'm trying to get away with a stitch that's as long as I can possibly make it and you'll see the tension is actually quite loose. I'm not gathering at all because this linen isn't all that tight on the frame. It's, it's not easy to get uh, linen to be of this sort of um, thickness to be very drum tight on a roller bar frame but it's fine and if you don't have any frame at all and you don't want to buy one then don't worry you could actually use a picture frame and take the picture out or a mirror frame anything I have one that I got from the charity shop that I'm going to set up with a design in and um, so that it actually is pulled tight away from itself. So you just keep going round and round the edge, <laughs> lacing the edge. <clears throat> so we've worked our way round here. It's, there are faults, that's fine. It's cloud, it's not going to be a uniform shape. And worked our way down to the corner. Now, to turn a corner, you have to jump forwards for the next bit. So you can't go down and up and down in that same place, unless actually you crossed it over like a cross stitch, which course you're very welcome to do if you want to but my method would be to come up a little way along that uh, stitching line and then go back down in the end of the first stitching line then again come back up so that's about the length of your first stitch and go down here and then come up and continue as normal. Now I'll just repeat that, Richard, if you hang on a minute. Going around this corner, you can see where it goes flatter, I can make longer stitches. And that's one of the lovely things about Go Work. The stitches, are they're not a uniform length, so it's a very forgiving medium. Right, so I'm finishing on the end there, just with a double stitch. Now, so you come again for a corner, work away from the end of the, your line, and then come back to the end of the line, then come up along the line, go down and finish the corner. Now, you just work this as roughly as you want. And I can actually go both ways. I can actually reverse this stitch and stitch along that way. And Basically, you're doing what my niece once said to me, your grand, um, Auntie Philly, she said, you're, it's just colouring in. It's easy. And it kind of is easy. You don't have to be exact. You could do a, a long cross stitch like that. And just colour in, colour in, colour in. So you could do a back stitch, you could come up, you can go through the last stitch and just colour in. Because what you, I want you to do is work these colours across areas. So we have drawn out, um, there, are, there are areas drawn on the design that you can download, but you don't have to stick to those at all. So those areas are similar to this one here. And you can see I I've obviously started off <laughs> really neatly and then had a glass of wine or been craving 
oh grey or have a late night um and then yesterday i did this one which is in a i want to show you now because it's in a darker blue and it's got a green couching and um again the the top line is one of the two colors used in here it's the it's the laid work used again exactly the same color but in a double thread for the top line and then these are the, just the random shapes and i'm amazed that looks so nice because i honestly just worked it really really untidily and then when it wasn't subtle enough, I just ran through with the another colour. I just took the white again and this pale colour again and I just I just added little bits and it's ended up I'm rather proud of it actually. I think it's rather good. So um you know, I always wanted to show off. So that was using these colours here. Not the purple, but it's using these colours. So um you know it can be anything in your stash and and snow clouds have a lot of brown and mauves and and lovely colors in so you i could have put a little bit of purple in i'm sure that uh, a child receiving this would be absolutely thrilled and i have a child in mind now for this one and i'm i'm rather excited if it's not my grandchild <laughs> So I'm just working my way down the cloud, just very roughly working a cruel stem or cruel outline stitch <clears throat> over the uh, lines that I've drawn. So really just, and then just sketching in, you just, just bang these stitches in, you know, it's a bit like the Jamie Oliver style of cookery, I suppose, that um, you can just do a long armed cross over them like that, or just, whatever you feel like doing and use up every bit of wool you could actually leave uh gaps in between and just have the linen showing through because that's a very sympathetic color as well so uh just scribbling them in and see what you can get away with and then i'm just finishing off that little thread now the colors i'm using on this one uh this is quite a sort of bright jolly blue and yellow and the sky is not going to be too moody so I'm sticking to those three paler colours the white the fawn and the sort of it's a sort of brownish grey but you could actually go very deep and moody like we have on this one which is using deeper colours and that's brought in the much deeper grey I could have put purple in so there's actually four colours in there and I'm, I'm quite impressed with how it actually looks at the end because all I've done is a very, very rough and very determined stitching all the way around. Um, and it's a combination of uh, split stitch, which is just making a stitch and coming back up through and that shades it. But it's all in double thread and it's all really quick. But just go over the lines you've drawn <clears throat> or if you haven't drawn any, just give yourself a little bit of a helping hand with a bit of pencil and that's much easier to follow. And then when you've made the outline shapes, just fill that in between. And then when I finish this, we'll move on to the lower area and actually move these frames down. <laughs> 